Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church, where again we have opportunity to gather around the means of grace today in both word and in sacrament. Today we're reminded that God is love. Not just loving, but he is the very definition of love itself. That's made clear nowhere more than at the cross, where God showed his love to us in sending his son, where Jesus showed his love to us in volunteering to take the hell we deserve. His love, in turn, prompts us to love him, and the way we love him is by loving one another, in action and in truth, not just in words. We'll hear more about it in our lessons, in our sermon, and in our hymns this morning. Today we'll be using the service setting three, which begins on page 188 in the front of Christian worship. That will be following our opening hymn of praise, hymn 523, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. We ask God to be with us and to bless the service this morning.
I invite you to stand as we turn to page 188 for the service setting three. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and I have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sin with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, I say. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the giver of everything good. Inspire us, your humble servants, to long for what is right, and through your gracious guidance, accomplish it to your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. In our first lesson for this morning, we see an example of love in action. A woman who is moved by God's love for her uses her gifts and talents to serve others. God, in turn, restored her life that she might continue to be a blessing to the church and to others. She expressed her love. Our first lesson is recorded in Acts chapter 9, beginning at the 36th verse. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, Please, come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room, then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. The word of the Lord. We continue our service with the psalm of the day. We'll sing together in unison Psalm 89C as it's found on the insert in your worship folder.
Perhaps the entire Bible could be summed up in just seven words. We love because he first loved us. We love, now we ought to, we do. And why? Because we are prompted by the love that God has shown to us in Christ. Our second lesson for this morning comes from 1 John chapter 4 and will also serve as our sermon text. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. He has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. The word of the Lord. Be to God. I invite the congregation to stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel this morning is found in the gospel according to St. John chapter 15, beginning at the ninth verse. Jesus instructs his disciples and us on the chain of love. God loved Jesus. Jesus loved his disciples. His disciples, in turn, were to love each other and to love others. Our gospel from John 15. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn 728, This Is My Will.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text chosen for today is our epistle reading from John's first epistle, chapter 4, beginning at verse 7, where John reminds us, God is love. Dear fellow redeemed, if you're a football fan, you may know the name Jim Harbaugh. And even if you're not a football fan, I will explain that Jim Harbaugh was formerly, this past season, the coach of the University of Michigan Wolverines, and he took them to a victory in a national championship. As a result, an NFL team asked Jim Harbaugh to be their head coach, the Los Angeles Chargers coach, for this coming season. They were so impressed with his work at college level that someone actually referred to him as football personified. Of course, there are such individuals in this world because of their skills and dedication to what they do or have done who have become synonymous with certain activities, whether good or bad. For instance, Michelangelo is referred to as the epitome of Renaissance art. If someone calls you Benedict Arnold, it means you're untrustworthy, you're a traitor. T.S. Eliot is modern poetry, say some. John Hancock, because he signed his name on the Declaration of Independence larger than anyone else so that the King of England would definitely see his name, has now become synonymous with putting a signature on something. If you sign a check or a contract, you might say, I'm putting my John Hancock on this document. When St. John describes God in our text for today, he says, God is love. If you want to understand God, who he is, what he does, why he does it, you must begin with this premise, God is love. Therefore, today we're going to probe this un fathomable statement to understand the depths of God's love for us. God is love. He demonstrated his love for us in Christ, and also we love because he first loved us. You know, this year isn't even half over yet, and it's estimated that there have been over 9,000 violent crimes here in the United States, many resulting in the deaths of other people, there have been severe flooding and other natural disasters here and abroad, tornadoes leaving people homeless and many dead. There have been kidnappings, sex trafficking of children, all kinds of abusive crimes, one human being against another. And there are many who look at all of this and ask, where is God in all of it? Where is this loving, merciful, gracious God that everybody talks about? Why does he permit these things to go on if God is love? Well, of course, I can't give you answers to every individual incident that happens. God has not revealed that to me nor to anyone else. Why he does what he does or allows what he allows, except that God does reveal this about himself that God is there, and that God is love. In fact, John writes, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, says John, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Some of you may remember back in the 1990s that two members of a rock band called Extreme sang a duet entitled More Than Words. Some of you probably remember that song. And of course, what they are saying is, in a love relationship, it's not just a matter of saying to someone, I love you. You have to show it in your actions. I can say to someone, I love you, but then spit in their face and say, oh, I love you, and spit in their face again. But you see, if my actions do not reflect what I'm saying, my words mean nothing. God demonstrated his love. 
Love is best expressed, expressed in action, and God expressed his love by sending Jesus Christ into this world. Jesus Christ, who took on our flesh and blood, was tempted in every way just as we are, yet without sin, lived a perfect life in our place. But he did it in order to be our Savior. C.S. Lewis puts it in these terms. He says, The eternal being who knows everything and who created the whole universe became not only a man, but before that, a baby, and before that, a fetus inside of a woman's body. If you want to get the hang of it, think of how you would like to become a slug or a crab. That's what Jesus did. Humbled himself to be one of us. Not only to live a perfect life in our place, but the Bible says that he went to the cross and took our sin upon himself, even though he had none of his own. And he died in our place for our sin to pay the death penalty because the Bible says the wages of sin is death and the soul who sins must die. And therefore Jesus became that soul on behalf of all of us who died in our place to ransom us from our sin. We can accuse God of being unjust and unloving and for being apathetic while sin and violence and dishonesty rage around us. We can accuse him of it until we look to the cross and we see Jesus Christ dying in our place for undeserving sinners such as we and realize that the forgiveness of sins is the greatest evidence of God's love. Yes, we have to look beyond all of the pain, the suffering, the violence, all of the things in this world that God may allow, often to purify our own lives so that we learn to trust in him, not in ourselves. Often to refine our faith. Often to use those events in our lives to draw us closer to himself, for God uses every event in the lives of those who love him for their eternal good. St. Paul said in Romans 8, God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things. Is there any blessing God is going to withhold from us? He did not withhold his only son whom he dearly loved, but God showed his love in action. God is love. God demonstrated that love in Christ. And we love because God first loved us. St. Paul says once again in Romans chapter 5, very rarely for anyone I'm sorry, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, it wasn't after we had done everything right. It wasn't because we had done something so good that God owed us something. No, St. Paul says, while we were still sinners... Christ died for us. Ah, yes, Christian friends, this is our motivation. This is our incentive. Paul said to the Corinthians, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them and was raised again. Yes, Christ's love for us compels us to love one another. Dear friends, let us love one another, says John, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. God wants us to reflect the love for him and for others that he has for us. John says we love because he first loved us. If anyone says I love God yet hates his brother, he's a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. It's as simple as that. Love God, love your brother. But it's a tall order, isn't it? Oh, how I have failed, my heavenly Father. I know that I have not loved God the way that I should that I put things before him in my life. I know that I have not loved my neighbor as myself. And I pray every day, God, give me the kind of love for others that you have for us. 
but I say, God, be merciful to me, for I have failed. But Jesus Christ did not fail me, and Jesus Christ did not fail you. No, Jesus Christ lived a perfect life in our place and died on the cross to pay the debt for our sin. And when Jesus calls us to love one another, Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. And John says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. That's a key verse in this text. We love only through Christ. Only through faith in Christ are we, every, are we everything that God wants us to be. Because Jesus' own righteousness is put to our credit. And as we dwell on what Christ has done for us and who we are in Christ, that is our incentive. That is our motivation. That compels us to love one another as God loves us. Never doubt the love of God, dear Christian friends. Even in the darkest times, even when the times are lean, when the pain is intense, when friends are few, always look to the cross of Christ and be reminded that Jesus' sacrifice in our place reminds us that God is love. Amen. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us confess our Christian faith according to the Nicene Creed on page 196. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We continue with the prayer of the church. We'll use the responsive prayer on page 198. <coughs> Loving God and Lord, you created the universe that surrounds us and the globe on which we live. You control all things through your Son, who sits at your right hand in glory. Give your word power as it works in our hearts and minds. Clear away our confusion and demolish our doubts. Send your spirit to strengthen both our confidence in your promises and our desire to live according to your will. Signs of the times warn us that the end of time is near. Protect us from scoffers who sneer at your truth. Spare us and Christians around the world from all forms of hate and persecution. Still in the hearts of our children a desire to follow you as they prepare for future days. Help them distinguish between what is passing and what is eternal, between instant thrills and lasting joy. Encourage more young people to prepare for service in the public ministry of the gospel. Hold in your care, Lord, those who are experiencing physical or emotional pain, 
and all who are afflicted by disease or facing death. Pour out your compassion on the grieving and comfort the mourners who miss someone they loved. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Whether we pray together or alone, you have promised to hear and answer us. Give us patience to accept your blessings in whatever way you send them. In your love and wisdom, prepare us for the day when you will take us to be with you forever. Hear us for Jesus' sake. Amen. At this point in our service, we have opportunity to respond to God's great love for us as we bring our offerings of thanks and praise to him. I invite you to stand as we turn to page 199 for the Liturgy of the Sacrament. The Lord be with you. to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his willing sacrifice on the cross took away the sins of the world and by his glorious resurrection, restored everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
Blessed are you, Lord God, eternal King and gracious Father. In love, you made us the crown of your creation. In mercy, you planned our salvation. In grace, you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling among us, that he willingly placed himself under law to redeem those under law, that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross, that he has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your Son's body and blood in the sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, strengthen our fellowship, and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God, our Father, and to your Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. At this point in the service, I invite just our 2,024 confirmands and the communicant members of their immediate families to come and be the first table of our distribution of the Lord's Supper this morning. Just a reminder, especially if this is your first time communing and you're the first one up, please go all the way towards the wall so that we have enough room. You may now come forward.
invite you to stand as we turn to the middle of page 203. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We only have a few announcements to highlight. First of all, stick around for Bible class if you're able in the basement. Professor Jacob Benkin will still be discussing Lutheran worship and what that means for us, so join if you're able. Um, if you're not able to do it here, you're also welcome to log in and join from home as well. Two announcements I've been asked to highlight. First of all, this Tuesday evening, the women of St. John's are hosting uh, a Bible study called Stump the Pastor. It's not anything that is scripted or prepared. You write the questions. You bring them if you want in person or if you want to give me a heads up, you can write them down and put them in a box that's in the new narthex. But they would like to uh, have a, you register ahead of time if you could so that they know how many refreshments and beverages to purchase for this event. So Tuesday evening at 7, join us for that. And then, of course, Thursday is uh, Ascension Day, and so we've got two more services for you then. There's one at 4 and one at 6.30. Please note there's not an 11 a.m. service, just 4 and 6.30 on Thursday for Ascension Day, join us for that. With that, may you go rejoicing in God's great love for you and eager to now show that love to one another. God be with you, friends, until we meet again.